eyes round Simon giggled and he stood up laughing a little now that the pallor of his faint was over he was a skinny vivid little boy with a glance coming up from under a hut of straight hair that hung down black and coarse he nodded at Ralph I'll come Jack snatched from behind him a sizable sheath knife and clouded it into a trunk. The buzz rose and died away. Piggy stirred. I'll come. Ralph turned to him. You're no good on a job like this. All the same, we don't want you, said Jack flatly. Three's enough. His glasses flashed. I was with him when he found the conch. I was with him before anyone else was. Jack and the others paid no attention. There was a general dispersal. Ralph, Jack, and Simon jumped off the platform and walked along the sand past the bathing pool. Piggy hung bumbling behind them. If Simon in the middle of us, said Ralph, then we could talk over his head. The three of them fell into step. This meant that every now and then Simon had to do a double shuffle to catch up with the others. Presently, Ralph stopped and turned to Piggy. Look. Jack and Simon were misted again, this time with humil humiliation. You told him after what I said. His face flushed, his mouth trembled. After I said I didn't want, what on earth are you talking about? About being called Piggy, I said I didn't care as long as they didn't call me Piggy, and I said not to tell, and then you went and said straight out. Stillness descended on them. Ralph, looking mo with more understanding at Piggy, saw that he was hurt and crushed. He hovered between the two courses of apology or further insult. Better Piggy than Fatty, he said at last, with the directness of genuine leadership. And anyway, I'm sorry if you feel like that. Now go back, Piggy, and take names. That's your job. So long. He turned and raced after the other two. Piggy stood, and the rose of indignation faded slowly from his cheeks. He went back to the platform. The three boys walked briskly on the sand. The tide was low and there was a strip of weed-strewn beach that was almost as firm as a road. A kind of glamour was spread over them and the scene, and they were consciously conscious of the glamour and made happy by it. They turned to each other, laughing excitedly, talking, but not listening. The air was bright. Ralph, faced by the task, of translating all this into an explanation, stood on his head and fell over. When they had done all, when they had done laughing, Simon stroked laugh Ralph's arm shyly, and they had to laugh again. Come on, said Jack presently, we're explorers. We'll go to the other end of the island, said Ralph, and look round the corner. If it is an island, the end of the afternoon, the mirages were settling a little. They found the end of the island quite distinct and not magic out of shape or sense. There was a jumble of the usual squareness, with one great block sitting out in the lagoon. Sea birds were nesting there. Like icing, said Ralph, on a pink cake. We 
sweat from his face. Ralph stood by him, breathless. Men. Jack shook his head. Animals. Ralph peered into the darkness under the trees. The forest minutely vibrated. Come on. The difficulty was not the sleep, the steep ascent round the shoulders of the rock, but the occasional plunges through the undergrowth to get to the next path. And stems of creepers were in such tangles that the boys had to thread through them like pliant needles. Their only guide, apart from the brown ground and occasional flashes of light through the foliage, was the tendency of slope. Whether this hole, laced as it was with the cables of creeper, stood higher than that. Somehow they moved up. Sweat that they had soaked their clothes in the 